still watching the Predator Alliance League 2020 Summer, powered by Globe Telecom, Twitch student, and presented by Globe Prepaid's Virtual Hangouts. We're Zilly Shoutcasters. I'm Hyron. With me is Percy, and we're getting to our second quarterfinals match here between Ateneo de Manila University, Dippy, and Holy Angel University, uh, Zells, here. Ah, band Warrior. Yeah, both, both of these guys Band Warrior here. And I really wanted to see new warrior. Uh, I mean, not new warrior, but like all the new tools that Bomb Warrior was able to get. It's Bomb Warrior. It's 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 my specialty. It's my jab. It's God. Yeah, I understand why. It's too like strong. both of them, Band Warrior. But yes, like this is the inevitability of it. Uh, just I mean, it is literally a ticking time bomb, especially with a new uh, with the new tools that they got. Uh, able to like up the durability on that wrench caliber, just put in more bombs in the deck. But of course, we are going to see uh, Zells versus Dippy here. It is going to be the Priest on Zells with Dippy on that Rogue. And of course, we are we do have our chat rally for this Predator Alliance League 2020 Summer Quarter Finals game. Just share this. Uh, oh, just uh, make some noise in the chat uh, with the hashtags Globe uh, hashtag Globe Prepaid Virtual Hangout or and with the team or in school you're supporting. This is hashtag how win or hashtag LG win for Admu. And this is going to be quite exciting. I mean, this is going to be an aggro uh, face rogue here, a weapon rogue here coming in from Dippy against a priest. That's going to be tough. Well, I would actually say the opposite because as long as Zeus gets his, what, Breath of the Infinite, he's mm -hmm. able to stabilize early game, he'll be able to stave off most of the pressure from yeah, shields yeah. and just, I mean, tougher the rogue, rather. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I do see some lines where yeah. both of the players still have, uh, you know, problems with dealing their own threats, dealing with the threats, and then just dealing the damage to finish the game off. But overall, of course, we have to favor the control deck over. Yes, the definitely. Aggro. Solo, I do see a lot of ways that Dippy can like get in, get into this and take out Zells. He is going second. Uh, does have that coin to enable some combos here. Um, it's gonna be... Let's see. Let's see how this all plays out. Yeah, and you can just spike with the backstab pickup. Now your whole game plan has changed. You were used to be... It used to be you're just going to coin into Hook Scimitar and then just go face, go ham. But now you can consider to coin Greyheart Sage for next turn and then backstab Scimitar the next. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty good here. Let's see what Zells picks up. Uh, they're quite expensive. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. Well, uh, it, it confirms that you'll have a dragon in, in your hand. Oh. Looking like the Rin you pick up or the Draconic yeah. Studies because you did pick up your. You did pick up the. The Taunter. So that if you play sure, the sure. on it, uh, if you play. Well, it seems the like the Renew is the pickup here. I just get, needs to get that HP and a future discover spell as well. Is on two mana, has the coin. Can go for uh, the draw two here. He does have that stealth minion. Let's see what yeah. he goes for. Sage is definitely the play because yeah, you you definitely need, need a sage in your team right now. Uh, He's just offering either uh, on both the Hook Scimitar and the Greyheart Sage. But yeah, I do agree. You need to bank in all those draws. And there's not really anything like does it okay. Of course it's a like it's, like it's an aggro deck. You want to be going face a lot, but I don't think uh dealing four uh with a hook scimitar is super valuable right now compared to the draw. So yeah, so he is going for uh the draw at this point. Going for the attack here as well. Pressure. He allows this one one to trade into the three one. Which Zels immediately does. And right now, just this Fate Weaver to for tempo. Looking pretty good right now for Zels. Pretty good stat line here. Does have. I really like a Wand Thief on, on this aggro list. Ooh. I would consider that a misplay. You would have rather wanted to Scimitar. Uh, backstab uh, Fate Weaver, and then you hit that, it. That, that's an easy clear there. And you still have uh, a 3 2. A 4 1 weapon there after ah. taking out the 3 6. So. Maybe. Let's see if Dippy just buys a bullet here and just go goes space. for go, just go space. Yeah. Oh, wow. saves the weapon charge as well. So that's the line of thinking that he's going through. Okay. 
Uh, it's okay if he uh, trades a three six or takes away my three, uh, three but that's gonna be two uh, thick minions on the side of Zell's here. That's gonna be quite tough for Dippy to handle. He does have deadly poison uh, for that six. So that's even gonna be. Look at that cutting clap oh. into another cutting class. Easy clap here coming in from Dippy. Let's see what he gets off the top. Man, just stealth minions. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, just go space. I mean, that is the game plan, and the stealth minions just complement that game plan even more. The renew. renew. This, yeah. Uh, just first off, renew and not going for the spell game here mm -hmm. means that. Zels is pretty scared of what Dippy has in store for him the following turns. Mm -hmm. Has to be wary. Uh, that health is going to help him quite a lot here. 21. Mm. It's still it's still not in the super manga S range here for the priest, mm. you know. <laughs> but Dippy, he's going to keep going. He does have a vis rate. Has to want, I really like the Wand Thief, right? Like, yeah, fireballs. Uh, get these fireballs out. And, and this, unsounding, if, yeah. and this unsounding souls just copy this fate weaver so that mm -hmm. from one three six you have two three sixes and then I have three three sixes but erase that here. On wings of destruction. Discover a spell from this deck here. Oh. Ooh, breath of the infinite here. Uh, uh, clear out the these. Yes, he does. Yeah, he yeah, does yeah. Have yeah. Mana for it. This is pretty good. Right. Takes away the. That's basically five. Uh, heal, heal five, right? Uh, it's four more of because you did take three damage from the... Oh yes, 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 from the raised bed. But still, as a quite solid work. I see what the Wand Thief takes. Oh. None, uh... Do you want to mirror Entity here? Mm -hmm. And play it for next turn? I mean... Yeah, it goes barrier. for Ice Barrier. So he is thinking that, okay, maybe Zell's might... Uh, like, maybe outrace him? He does have a couple of... Uh, beefy minions on Zell's side of the board. Blizzard as well. So he's getting these uh, little panic buttons here for, for Dippy in case that Zell's is uh, starting to get overwhelming. And of course, if if they're frozen, they can't trade into your minions. I guess that could be one way of thinking about it as well. Yeah, all of the damage counts, no matter how small, how big. As an aggro deck, you need, that's your resource, health. Mm -hmm. It's bo both mm. your opponent's health, your opponent's minion's health, your own minion's health, and your own, your hero's health. It's definitely a resource that has to be taken into consideration into consideration when you're playing an aggro deck. And yeah. Dippy is looking like a disciplined player in a well versed to know these basic principles. Let's see. What's next word? Six. Yeah, oh. Dippy's only to just heal, trade off everything. Yeah, I think healing because right now. With eviscerate dagger into deadly poison into sinister strike, that's ten damage. So you need to get out of that range here. Wait, this, this is this is ten damage oh. on the hand. Yeah, ten from... damage on hand. Oh my goodness! This oh, he doesn't is... quite have. It doesn't have wait, quite enough. So. Wait, ten damage in hand. Yeah, it doesn't have wait, quite wait, enough to both wait, wait. dagger. Ten damage in hand, dagger. This is default. Ten is damage in hand, the dagger, hero power, sinister strikes coming in clutch. Right, here. yes, sinister strike. There we go. Oh. There Coming we go. Through. Dippy finding the lethal to take to just steal Wait, game yeah. one away from Zell's clutches off of the three fate weavers. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot. Uh, Pass my mind that the stealth minion was still a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Zell's wasn't. It, uh, I was thinking, okay, Zell's can't keep this three one alive, but he didn't have anything to deal with it. So that's really the strength of this rogue here. That that once you get the initial damage in, you have these stealth minions. One thief didn't really give him anything super aggressive. But with the sinister strikes, sinister strikes in with the eviscerate as well. That's enough damage, and that's all you have to always be careful with the rogue here. But of course, the, because of the format, that we're not going to be seeing that rogue again in this best of three. It is going to be the druid. Let's see what Zels picks up for the next game. Yeah, some some shadowy goodness here for the rogue. Like mm -hmm. as you mentioned. You did not see the free one there. It was definitely hiding in the shadows, like waiting for lethal to oh. happen. That is the strength. Oh, from the caster. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I was too fixated on the hand. Like, okay, <laughs> let, let's see this tree one. It's definitely going to get cleared, right? That's some. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, okay, so I was thinking six mana, that's not enough. But then I forgot. Oh, three, 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 three attack stealth minion. Yeah. Going cl coming clutch. 
uh, for uh, for Dippy there. Let's see what uh, Zell yeah. picks up for the next game. So it is going to be Dippy on the Druid and Zell's on the Priest. This is going to be different from the Druid that we saw a while ago from mm -hmm. Splash. This is actually uh, Animal Druid, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And Beef this Druid. is... Uh, while we're waiting for the game to start, we let's check out the bracket again. Mm -hmm. How... And how we got here, basically, with with everyone just uh, playing their hearts out and getting just getting some good, cold, clean, uh, hmm, whoa, some crisp, clean yeah. locks, formats with everything. I and think. every game that we've had uh, in these matches for just from quarterfinals has been very very exciting, very dynamic as well, especially in the previous match, all that back and forth with the top decks. Uh, very exhilarating to watch. And it's always nice to see uh, Priest uh, get taken down a notch by a face robe. Yeah, you would say that this is the one of the more menacing effects of the meta. Because it's yeah. control, it's very, you don't want your opponent to play. And whoop, you did see the Keltas there. This is Guardian Animals Druid with the Keltas on the board. Grandmasters have some of them, most of them have cut Keltas entirely, but there's just like one or two who believe in its power. And all of our competitors, if they have the Druid, they're going to just try for it. We did give them some time to change their decks, but they still believe in the power of the Sunweb. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some, some of the players have been substituting. Uh, uh, Kael'thas with another card. Can you tell us a little bit more of what the alternative is if you're not bringing the Kael'thas? Yeah, definitely. We, we've gone full circle, actually. The only... Oh, wow. Kael'thas again. We've actually gone full circle. How Spell Druid was the menace of the meta I during died. Ashes of Outland. Oh, and now yeah. we have the Survival of the Fittest one. It, Spell Druid used to have Exotic Mount Seltzer as the top end. And now... Uh, and some of the grandmasters have been slotting in exotic mount seller, which is also a seven drop for Keltas. Uh, it does see some awesome play because you have you do have your lightning blooms now. You do have you still have your zero mana spells off of bog beam and out of iron bark. Uh, with the mount seller generating a lot of value, I guess it is a good addition since there's also some GMs running glowfly swarms as well, making the hybrid, so to say. Yeah. Hybrid spells animals. Despite the Kelfus nerf, if you play around it well, you do have the Lightning Bloom, you have do have the Innervate. Uh, it, you can still, like, cheat out those cards uh, at one mana instead of zero. And it's still very, very potent here. Of course, Dippy going for the ramp. It's going to be quite, uh, health, uh, quite healthy going into this game here. But this yeah. Priest, working to hamper that game plan. Yeah. He has to go somewhat aggressive here. Like he can choose the apotheosis so that he has board pressure. He can coin out the fate weaver. I don't really like the coin here, but because you'd rather want to coin into your allura. But let's just see how this goes. Seems like he wants to uh, uh, pressure Dippy here a little bit. Of course, his teacher's pet gonna put a hamper on those plans as well. Four five. A pretty solid bidding here coming from Dippy. This is like I like the, and it is gonna be the survival of the fittest in two turns if he picks up a lightning bloom. That could be the very next turn here. Oh, but Zell's putting out a lot of pressure here. Five five life steal, and, and the renew. Yeah, the renew as well, just to keep it top, uh, almost topped off. Suddenly we're tempo priesting here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dippy here, not really finding the cards to combo with Kael'thas here. Uh, he does at least have more than 7 Wana Crystals at this point, so Iron Bark, Bog Beam, uh, they are going to be discounted. But he doesn't have him on hand. So close to that uh, survival of the fittest. Yeah, but with the lack of draws from Dippy's side, he does, he has ramp quite considerably, but that ramp is at the cost of Pure nothingness. Mm -hmm. It's gonna like, be very really hard for Dippy. Ramping into nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it has happened most of the time when during the olden days of Druid, where you would like wild growth into another wild growth, and then you you basically did nothing the next turns. 
Because you're just setting up for your Force of Nature Savage Shore combo. My hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna go into the Isera here. 412, beefy minion, get some dragon value inside of that deck. Uh, just to invest in the future here. An iron Five, bark yeah. so that it contests with the Fate Weaver. Mm -hmm. But it's prone to the Shadow Word deck! Yeah, that's the thing though. Four is like the magic number against Priest. And you basically o opened yourself up to an instant Shadow Word death. I'm like, wait that's a, a good second. That's yeah. A good oh, you hate to see it. But of course, as the Priest, you definitely. Oh, Love to yeah, see your Shadow Word deaths that yeah. don't cost 3 mana I, anymore. I, I really think Dippy should have, like... That should have been at the back of his mind. If I buff this minion, am I gonna get punished for it? I mean, 4 is the magic number. Yeah. Uh, but here, it seems like that's heavily punished, and Zell is just keeping the advantage here. Yeah, because probably Dippy was considering that... Whoa! Nature studies, not get, getting anything useful. This look like an easy GG, I guess, for Dippy. Just uh, bounce back from the losses, hopefully. Because this is difficult for this difficult even for Dippy to just come back. With. Because I was going to say a while ago how Dippy was just considering to trade into the Fate Weaver to the Fate Weaver because it was at a five five, right? That's why he played the Iron Bark there. Now. Survival of the fittest here. And also the thing, uh, one of your big uh, top end here, Survival of the fittest. Also, Zell is quite closer to Peace Removal. Zell's here. Just uh, unfazed. Taking out that 811 without any problem. And only the all, all Dippy has to show for it is uh, maybe a dragon. Not quite enough and a lightning bloom. Oh, oh number two. Does he actually have any direct damage? Let me go check. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Are we going to see magic again? What? What the heck? Excuse you? <laughs> Hello? Uh... Okay, the madness has stopped. Okay, this okay. bog beam is going to deal a lot. Uh, Malagos plus bog beam. Uh, it doesn't have direct damage, but it does have uh, removal ready for it. Wow. This also plays around the soul mirror, because even if you did soul mirror, you're only basically killing the scale lord and this twilight trick. Mm-hmm. But whoa, this wave of oh, apathy yeah. into Soul Mirror! Oh yeah, Soul Mirror. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely... He steals your board. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's not a turn all minions attack to one. It's turn all minions attack this turn to one. But still, yeah. this is going to be Zell's... Oh. Uh, oops. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Still though, Zell's has the advantage. I mean, next turn... Next Zell... turn is lethal because... Yeah, next turn is lethal. Yeah. Uh, you hate and Dippy sees it on a wall. Stop deck innervate when you've already ramped up to your stuff. Oh man. But that was some exciting stuff with like a that's a very thick deck that Dippy still has and was still able to conquer through with uh, just try to pass by, right? So this is gonna be the Druid versus Druid at this point, and I think they're being bringing uh, quite. Similar in terms of game plan here, but what are, are, are there any key differences to the lists, the druid list that they're bringing here? Let me check a few. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Zels does not have the animated broomstick, whereas like... Dippy has animated broomstick. What animated yeah. broomstick does is it's a one mana rush that Battle Cry gives all of your other minions rush. It seems and, basic, yeah. right? Right, but it give, it basically means all your like non rush beasts they turn into proactive threats. Exactly. That you can use to clear the board and contest the board. And I think that's going to be crucial as well. Instead of the... And he has two of those animated broomstick. And as for the other deck list here, Crystal Power going to be the pickup here instead. So... And, yeah. mm -hmm. Some Anubisat defenders as well for Zels, which is the older variation of the Survival of the Fittest. There are more minions slotted in for... Uh, Zelsa's deck because you, you don't want to survival of the fittest your deck and you don't really have a lot of minions on the board, right? Yeah. So that's the logic behind playing a zero mana uh, bu a buff what? Seven? Nine? Uh, it's pretty good still. But still. Oh! Uh, if you can make this work. This is the duality of the deck, guys. What the heck? Both of these uh, moles are. Oh. Oh, oh, calm down. Is this, is this oh. gonna, just gonna be 
This is just gonna be... Oh, whoa, whoa. Both of these Which... players have overgrowth. Both of them have guardian animals. But then again, this is a matchup where the, the one who plays the guardian animals first loses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, that which comes first cuts later, right? Like Yes, yes. Uh, that basically you pull the trigger, you don't have anything to rush into. That gives dip, uh, that gives the opposing player the initiative uh, on their guardian animals. So it's really, this is really a precarious matchup. Now, this mirror is really interesting to look at because uh, all the decisions that come into play, when to pull the trigger, when to uh, play into your uh, kill host combo as well, like who gets to that point first. And th these ramps are very, very crucial, but both of these players do have access to overgrowth. Yeah, very balanced looking game right here, unlike the last game. And from them being playing this deck conservatively shows that they know how the mirror plays. It's on seven. He's eyeing the guardian animals. Maybe but... you'd rather just play your Twilight Runner now. Yeah, it's stealthed, you... and that basically means if Dippy goes for the, uh, the guardian animals himself, so oh. he goes for the guardian animals. He gets the teacher's pet. Uh, nothing to rush into quite yet. Let's see what uh, Dippy responds to this with, because he can go with your own. Uh, oh. But he does have a lot of uh, spells here. Has the coin, has the bog beam. Can go straight into maybe... A guardian animals, of course. Yeah, guardian animals. No survival to fit us uh, quite yet, but still. Uh, as you said. Whoever... Yeah, whoever pulls out the... Uh, the guardian animals first. Blow... Uh, I don't want to say blows this low. Uh, already, basically... Puts his cards on the table, right? And yeah. that allows Dip, uh, the opposing player to respond. And here, Dippy gets the initiative. He gets the yeah. clear two with a 4-6 cleave. Zell's definitely misread the situation here, mm -hmm. where he has useless what? cards in his hand. He chooses the what? He chooses the card that is more reactive than proactive, and I would say gets punished for it. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's really tough. Also, just the fact that the Kelthus was there means that Dippy gets a lot of value from his hand. So let's yeah. see. How does Zell uh, get back here? He does have 8 mana. It's got to be tough. You got two Innervates. Uh, you should have made your Twilight Runner yeah, earlier. Now you might have the hero power into the Kelta so that it doesn't go out of here. Kind of steals, but. And this puts Dippy in quite a good position. Though neither of these, uh, neither of these like super, uh, super big like their health totals. Uh, it's de definitely still about who can keep getting more value out of their cards, right? Yeah, definitely. And I'm checking chat right now, and someone's asking if if Dippy and Zells have the same number of pieces in the deck as the Ysericus come into play. Uh, let me check here that Dippy has six beasts, including two Lake Thrashers, two Teacher's Pets, and two Tired Runners, whereas uh, Zell's only runs five, with only one Lake Thrasher. But this is a good combo in itself, right? Shuffling yeah. your Dream Portals, and then you attack with your Twilight Runner. Good stuff. You draw into them, perhaps you get an even super, like, super solid board. But I really, I, I don't know. This I really like how this matchup plays out. Beast Druid versus Beast Druid. It's, a, it's combo versus combo stuff. Mm -hmm. so it's it's all it's always pretty good to see uh, that no one's. It's like playing fair, as Sir Leo does say. Like the, the, uh, minions bumping into the minions. No shenanigans over here. No silences. No transform just, mechanics. Yeah. Just beasts just... and dragons just punching each other out. Survival of the fittest. The most adaptable. Uh, Druid player wins the day here. This 515 is Sarah, quite beefy. No Shadow Word death around uh, to ruin her day. Yeah. I think uh, so far, even with Zell's getting heavily punished early, it seems like he's still in a pretty comfortable situation at this point. Dippy does have the animated room. Uh, can get the rush in if he needs to get like that cleave with the Lake Thresher. Of course, Guardian Animals, just the good pickup overall pos possibly yeah so, uh, again i did mention that tippy has six piece so i think this still brings out 
Oh wait, I missed Gauntlet. Only one? I had to a while ago. Oh yeah, he already pulled out the earlier. So, 7 mana, draw one, draw a 4-5 and play it. Uh, not send summon it. Uh, uh, it's not too bad, but it's definitely not as valuable as is usually. Speaker Gidra is going to be out here. Lots of... Uh, looks like Zels is in a pretty comfortable situation despite the earlier blunder. I, I definitely, because he has the Isera in play, whereas Dippy still doesn't have the Isera. That is the secondary mechanic of the Guardian Animal Spirit. Yeah. And if you don't have your secondary condition after you've played your primary condition, you have played both of your guardian animals, Let's then see. you're starting to feel the heat. It's gonna be tough. Super, super tough. Ah, I see. And here, I, here I was thinking this is gonna be like a Ateneo de Manila University day, right? Like, uh, you splash coming out clean, uh, Dippy looking strong earlier. Now though, it seems like Zells is putting the pressure. This Ghidra could um, could mean a lot here for Dippy. Though as long as that uh, Twilight Runner is stealth, it's gonna be tough for him to take that one out. There we go. Survival the fittest. But would you consider Still, that though. because you're going to run I mean, into your opponents? Survival yeah, the right? Like 10 mana do nothing. And then take Ah, okay. 12, okay. but the Lake Thresher... Lake Thresher, Iron Bark into the Broomstick. Yeah, really nice taunt placement here by Zels. Not to yes. not get punished by the Lake Thresher. There we go. And he does know the Broomstick is going yeah. to be played. Yeah, that's why I like the Broomstick a lot from Dippy, you know. It basically lets your 5... It's like a swipe. It's like a swipe. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or it's a, it's a cleave effect. And at this point, because of the, the way Zels position, it's not as... Valuable, but it's still clearing two threats on board here. Exactly, if he puts it does out. not count Dippy out of the woods. Mm -hmm. I mean, out of the game, I'm sorry. Uh, he can just overgrow for next turn so that he, he has more answers on the board. He can even choose to keep the excess mana right now, mm -hmm. which he does because it's going to be an activator for Keltas if he gets it in the following turns. Whoa, interesting choices here. Iron Bark, Gift of the Wild, more buffs. The, the bigger your minions are, and the faster that you get them off the board, it's going to be the decider for this matchup. Yeah. Iron Bark is just like free play, right? Like zero mana. And if Zell uh, he can still make a lot of use of it. Though Hidden Oasis, 6-6 six, six Ancient with Taunt, does stop the... Okay, it doesn't stop the, the cleave from the, from the Lake Thresher. Whoa, but, big stuff. Maybe a fitness. This is just survival of the fitness here. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, this. This is confusing for me. Wait, if ah, you survive the fittest oh, no, here, if you survive the fittest here, you clear out the lake thresher. That means if Dippy has his own survival of the fittest, it's only going on the broom and oh, Speaker run, Ghidra. Oh, uh, uh, go for the Speaker Ghidra. No, this is bad. This is actually bad. No, 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 no. no. But he has. Oh no! Oh no! no Innervate <laughs> zero mana. No! no! But it's fine, I guess. A wild miscalculation, dude. Oh, man. Still, though. Still, though. He takes out the Lake Thresher. This means that Dippy... Oh, there's, there's a Sarah. There's a Sarah. Oh, Zells. Oh, no. Is this the comeback for Zells? Ah, this is such a feel-bad comeback, though. Oh, rip. I'm I i I'm sorry chat. I, I was I, I'm shifting between two screens, so I I forgot that Kelfas was there. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, thanks for reminding me. Really. Thanks for yeah. reminding me. Or he already he's it early. Oh, okay. though. Uh oh. It's pretty good. Pretty solid stat line here for Zells. Yeah. Still though. We're still survival of the fittest for fourteen damage here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man. This is still pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And that's really when you when you have the survival of the fittest initiative, this is like the opposite, right? The one that plays guard animals first is usually the one that gets punished. But here, you want to be the first one to get survival of the fittest, especially for contesting a board, since Yeah, since here, if he can clear Oh, wasn't able to clear the Sarah there at that point. Oh but, no, yeah. this is it. We're done. Dippy. Um, my Go back and forth from these two players here. Let's have to survive the fittest, but it's not going to be enough to 
uh, to take away uh, the win here. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that yeah that the, the the misplay wasn't punished, but from the draws here, the the Gidra interaction, the spell burst is very confusing, as what Zels has demonstrated. But it, ultimately, it it matters in situations that are well balanced. But in situations like this where you have the advantage, you you're about to gain the advantage. It it doesn't matter as much. And now just Zels one turn away from just just taking a slot in our semifinals. Oh, not enough to take down that wind fear. I can see. Ah, uh, Dippy. Uh, that feels bad. After punishing the premature guardian animals, Zels takes it back though. And yeah, that's that's I, that's why I really love seeing this mirror match between these uh, the the same types of deck. Like it's very back and forth. All these small decisions amounting to like big butterfly effects here. And I have to stress the importance of being able to put out your like if even if it's like an even board. If it's an even board. If you put out your guardian animals first, you clear their board, they guardian animals into nothing. Uh, yes. And that's basically what the one here, the Holy Angel University uh, player here, Zealous. And people from that school, fans of Zealous, have to be very happy about that. Yeah, with uh, Admood taking the games for Hearthstone 1-1, mm -hmm. uh, it's still an e uh, even outing for Admood, but Dippy. Mm -hmm. The Hearthstone Elite Top 8 does get taken down in a very instructive manner. He didn't yeah. he didn't go down in a beatdown, but at least he went down in style and we can at least learn from this mm -hmm. uh we can learn from these sets yeah. of games that maybe Kelfast is still pretty good. Maybe there there is to, still some hope. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to learn when to use him, not not to misplay like with all these zero <laughs> Zero mana yeah. spells, and of course, yeah, that's that's what esports hack arena. That's what Predator Alliance League is all about. You know, we play, we learn, and I think the second part is really the most important. There, well, if you learn uh, how to play more optimally, learn how to uh, uh, learn how all these interactions go, learn to respect your opponent's cards, know the decisions. Super, super uh, interesting. And we're going to be seeing more Hearthstone in the following week. So uh, just stay tuned and watch out uh, at the Esports Akarina page and, of course, the website akarina.com. We have been your shoutcasters for Hearthstone. I'm Hyron. With me was Percy, and we'll be seeing you with League of Legends, the fifth week of the group stage for League of Legends Predator Alliance League 2020 Summer after a long after, after a break we'll be seeing you guys me and for be casting that uh after a while so see you and stay tuned have fun with it